Hello, everyone. Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology and Management uh, course. This is week 12, lecture 2. In this week, we are completing the data requirements and access from the WRIS website. Most importantly, we are looking at hydro meteorological data that we have for the water balance equation to understand groundwater hydrology. We would like to also look at why each parameter is important. Just a refresh, I'll do uh, why this parameter is important in the hydrological water balance. So in the last lecture, we looked at the soil moisture. So how rainfall goes in and part of the water is kept in the soil moisture, the remaining goes down to groundwater. So now we know like in the storage, groundwater storage, not all rainfall goes in after it infiltrates there is some soil moisture that has to be removed. And this will be also used for the remote sensing uh, data that we will be using later, especially the GRACE data. So the evapotranspiration, which is uh, two words, uh, evaporation and transpiration. Evaporation is from the uh, land surface or water body surface, open surface, where water is being evaporated. Okay, um, And the transpiration is the process where the uh, roots take water and, and goes through the plants and then comes out uh, during the photosynthesis activity. So both uh, evaporation and transpiration start with liquid water, but then it uh, vaporize, converts it into vapor and then goes up. So these two are kind of losses in the hydrological balance system, whereas one loss, for example, the photosynthesis loss uh, transpiration is needed. But again, as a water, it is a loss, right? All the water is not kept in the system. It is taken up and not fully used and then sent into the atmosphere. So once we know how much is sent back to the atmosphere, we would know how much we need to uh, save uh, water for groundwater recharge and for surface water storage. Again, uh, evapotranspiration is, as I mentioned, there is land and then there's plant. Maybe the land, you could put some monitoring devices and then assess based on the radiation, incoming radiation, how much uh, evaporation can happen and based on the land type and stuff. But for plants, it's very difficult, right? Because each plant might look different. Uh, the biomass is different, even within the same species. The leaf area is different and all these would impact how much water they take and pump. Think about leaves as uh, factories where it pumps uh, the water out of the system, fluos to meta, okay? So water comes through the roots, goes to the stem, and then goes to the leaf, and from the leaf, it transpires. So there is uh, a lot of uh, studies that we have done in school where we put uh, uh, the bottle uh, and inside the bottle, we put the plant and we see the transpiration happening, et cetera. It depends on the biomass and the leaf, et cetera. So if you have one tree, it is easier to estimate the evapotranspiration compared to a forest, because forest, we have multiple um, things that can uh, go about, right? So uh, we will uh, look at that, and that is where, uh, similar to the soil moisture, we are going to use a variable infiltration capacity model. WIC. Uh, and the WIC is again driven by the remote sensing data because, as I said, um, your incoming radiation is important, the leaf area is important, the barren land, open surface is important. So, all these have to be plugged together in one model, and then the result should be how much evaporation plus transpiration happens. Uh, and that model, which the NRSC uses, is called the Variable Infiltration Capacity Model, or VIC. Uh, it has been successfully used across India, where a lot of advisories have been built for farmers on this. For example, if they know the evapotranspiration rate, EP, from the crop, then the farmers are advised to say, this is how much volume is lost per day, millimeters per day. You multiply it by the area, you get the volume. Um, and so now the farmer knows, okay, if so much water is pumped, uh, would I be able to sustain the whole crop or should I be pumping more water or asking the, uh, the water policy makers and the engineers to release more water in the channels. So all these uh, discussions, uh, advisories are based on this uh, model output, which is ET-based 
um, and also remote sensing driven data. There could be some data that has been used for ground routing, observation data, ground data, but most of the model is driven by your remote sensing data. Like earlier, I won't get into the full details of the model, but because here we are just looking at the data uh, and where it comes from. So it comes from a model and the model is driven by remote sensing data. This is how it uh, looks like when I made the slide. Um, and there are some changes uh, in the WRIS uh, evapotranspiration link. Uh, the link is same, but how it opens, how it visualizes is slightly different and that keeps updating. Okay. Um, and uh, so, but the overall um, arrangement is the same, wherein you have your right side with the focus area, the time and the data and the center part is for the map and the left hand side is to tweak the model outputs how you want to see it okay so now let us uh, go to the wris website where we'll be looking at um, the uh, different um, uh, methods and uh, availabilities of different data Right. One thing we need to understand that is we do have um, multiple data, but we need to understand that um, uh, because it is a government uh, led data, this uh, WRIS data is used widely. Okay, so uh, please just understand that um, uh, it's not one data we are promoting because this is from the government, uh, we are going to use this data. So I'm going to share the uh, screen with uh, the WRIS website. Uh, and this is how it looks. Uh, just to show how just to show how you get here, I'm going to uh, come back. So it is WRIS. The home page can be taken up. And from the home page, you go back to the hydrometeorology and then evapotranspiration. Okay. So to save time, I have already downloaded. So I go to water data, come down to hydrometeorology and evapotranspiration. When you click it, this page opens and uh, it does take some time. You could see and then it, it populates. So India WRS evapotranspiration. Okay, the right hand side says it is uh, India scale, the whole scale of India is taken, and you have daily average uh, between the two dates, which is uh, 28, actually three dates, 28 or 9.30, so three dates uh, is taken, um, and um, the model uses the big model. Uh, so the average transpiration across India is 0.81 millimeters, okay, per day. Now, here's the question. Uh, is it okay to see the whole India ET rate? No, because uh, at the end of the day, you're going to manage this water and supply water to farmers and people for water management. Because this is groundwater, we look at how much goes back to the aquifer. Okay, And if you see that the aquifer changes across India, so there is no point of having one value uh, for India as ET. Hmm? You can differentiate as uh, regions, and th those regions are called hydroclimatic regions. You have here agroclimatic ecological regions. Those are regions with similar land type, geology type, and climate. So you will have a better, um, you know, um, way of putting this in as an average value for hydroclimatic zones. Uh, but for India level, it is kind of stretching far because uh, we will not be using uh, this value per se for water management or groundwater recharge activities. However, this is the default scale. The India scale comes up uh, and a particular date comes up from the VIC model. You can come down. Uh, the base layer has been black, which is okay. I can change the base layer if you like. Base map. You can say dark, I'll put streets so that it might uh, be faster. So yeah, now it's faster. You can put imagery, layer list, uh, you want district boundary, it's only three layer list, okay? 
So the print and data download is there. We will come back to that later. Um, what I would uh, suggest is uh, we will uh, stick to the um, uh, Maharashtra one because of the evapotranspiration that occurs. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, the right side, as I said, has your uh, average uh, evapotranspiration in millimeters for that particular time period, three days. Okay, and per day is there. The unit is per day. Okay, so please don't um, uh, say that the per day is not good, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, it is a uh, kind of a known um, a value because when you say evapotranspiration for what? For a day or for a month. You have to specify that. And when you specify for a day, then the day is gone in the unit. It's just millimeters. Okay. So uh, make sure that you know that it is per day. And I'll show you the, the um, time series of graph also. Uh, as initially done, we do have some states. Uh, not all states would be able to be fit on the graph. So you'll see down there are different dates. Okay. So you have different uh, states here, and those states can be uh, put up. Um, in this uh, graph when you download it as an Excel sheet. And then there is a daily evapotranspiration rate uh, from uh, 28 to 30. So automatically there is a daily EPT rate given for India for um, a period of a month. And you can see that it comes down, goes up, comes down and slightly goes up in the March period. So the coming down is also because of less availability of water. Remind, I'm reminding you, uh, ET is the process of evaporating the water, but for that you need to have water. So would there be high ET during the rainy season, after the rainy season? Yes. Because you will have water to evaporate. You'll have water for the soil, for the plants to take up. There won't be much ET losses in the summer because already the water is gone. Okay, it quickly evaporates, and after evaporation, there's nothing more to evaporate in the land. So understand that part, and it is uh, very um, uh, carefully to be understood and taken why it is high in uh, rain, rainy season and why it is low in non-rainy season. So coming down, you also have the other states. And again, it's my duty to explain that uh, it is not um, that uh, Andaman has uh, no uh, ET. It does have a lot of forest out there. So Andaman will have ET. However, because of the size of Andaman, it is smaller. You can see here, it is smaller to the size of the satellite or remote sensing data. You won't have data. So no data should have been there rather than zero. Uh, zero is kind of misleading. I'm going to click India again and show another uh, island state, which is your uh, Lakshadweep Island. Okay, I clicked India, so I think it's taking some time to go back to the initial stage. And looks like the base layer, uh, the black layer, is taking a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to just change the base layer. See, it's not even populating, but when you change the base layer, base map gallery, you go to streaks, and then quickly it will come comparatively. Yeah. So let it populate. Uh, uh, while it populates, I'm going to come down. All these data is already there. Uh, you can see uh, Lakshadweep. So Lakshadweep is zero. So this is what I'm trying to say. There is no zero ET. It cannot be zero ET. There should have been some ET, but it's not there, okay, because it is not measured. So, so it should have been no data rather than no zero ET, because zero is a value, right? Good. And I hope zero was not taken in for the averaging because it pulls down the average value also. So 0 0.81. So that could be an exercise. You can download this data and then uh, for all the states and then estimate the average. Now you could remove Andaman and remove Lakshadweep zeros and then do the average. If the average is same, then it is correct. If the average is different, then it is wrong because Lakshadweep and Andaman should not have zero ET. By physics, by the land use, land cover that we know, there should be some evaporation and transpiration. Always there is some evaporation transpiration. It's not zero. Okay, so now you see the district boundaries and uh, because we have picked here as admin, um, uh, 
you know uh, boundaries we want to see uh, and uh, here we will go back to the uh, full uh, view of uh, india okay so um, then what we do is we want to see if a unit wise selection okay so then uh, we would um, going to see for india how it looks like uh, in a particular uh, state okay so let us go to state uh, thing and then as i said uh, your et can be a sum of et for a month or average average is good because then later you can sum so let's do a, a, an average and then there's only one one more nrsc vic model i'm going to do maharashtra again let's pick jalgaon again because jalgaon we use for um, the soil moisture you can see it is very low but we will increase the date to have uh, more uh, you know spread of the data okay so jalgaon is slightly increase and then the time step is daily is fine and then we are going to go to uh, month uh, jan 1 so while it is doing this uh, you can also see india how et happens uh, and et is high in rajasthan and gujarat but the uh, rainfall value and groundwater value is low so now here's the deal uh, if it is low in uh, let's do that quickly before we look at the maharashtra data so if uh, this you could see let me see if i could pull down my pointer yeah so what do you see here is the dark blues are in the rajasthan part punjab and gujarat region which also has less rainfall and less ground water so what are they doing is they are pumping more water into the system uh, by using extra ground water and letting it evaporate uh, and transpire uh, this is done for crop growth they are just not simply pumping and putting it on the ground and evaporating um, they want to do more and more agriculture so for that agriculture there is lot of ground water use uh, and that relates beautifully to the evapotranspiration pattern you will see less evapotranspiration on the water bodies because moving water evaporates slowly compared to a uh, standstill water for example you have a dam uh, the dam water would evaporate faster than a moving water because while moving it does cool down okay so you have these kind of effects and also you have um, a detailed uh, view of fall of india where et is high and et is low for that particular day so we have picked jalko one and that one month data is taken so you could see that it is going down and then slight blip and then goes uh, down again so but if you take like your soil moisture uh, from your june month which is your monsoon month there is no submit button so when you uh, do the trick is when you do the final date button it automatically appears and beautifully you could see it go up and come down so here is where the rabi uh, crop picks up and the kharif is here which means during the rainfall season the et is slowly building up because people would put uh, crops and then uh, wait for it to grow uh, and while it is growing you have the uh, crop um uh, water requirements uh, and those water requirements are converted to evapotranspiration okay so then what happens is you have also the uh, data on crop type crop area and um, uh, acreage so all these are put together in one um, model and then the evapotranspiration is taken up rainfall radiation crop area all these things right so uh, you can see that it slowly picks up and then the growing period is attained uh, water is there it grows and then it starts to stagnate okay it comes down and then one low value is attained uh, this uh, could be different for different uh, districts you can zoom in for the district if you want this yes, and double clicking and zooming in 
Uh, and you can see how uh, the uh, boundary is put for Jalgoon and you are getting these data out. You could see it is like a box box type. Why is like a box box on the edges? Is because it is a pixel. A pixel is a box, right? All these are remote sensing driven data. So uh, the boundaries are not set like original boundaries. It is set as pixel. So if you have uh, one pixel, let me draw it. Okay, so you have uh, a pixel which is coming in okay, like this. So you can have part of this data is going to the other district, but part of it is, most of it is in, within your district. So you'll keep that uh, major part of the data. So there is some averaging that is done at a district level, um, which is beyond the scope of this class. So I will not be teaching it, but please understand that the boundaries are kept for the pixel um, data also. So now you have this data and you can download it as um, an, a CSV file, or you can take the image as a PNG trap. So you can just quickly put this in your uh, reports and other work, or just take this as an image. Uh, but you can also download it as Excel file, CSV file, and then you can work on it as a table and then do more, more calculations. Then when you come down, you have uh, the average value per day and you have different dates here where you can put different values. Uh, and then you have um, the data downloaded options are available. Okay, so uh, this is how you could see uh, the data um, you know, for evapotranspiration. It is hard to now break the evaporation and transpiration. All you could do is you could uh, say that this is um, this is kept uh, within. Uh, one second, I'll just close this district because it is actually causing some confusion. It is Jalgo and not. Uh, it is just an example. It says, "Do you want to see Amaravati?" Uh, and then when you click Amaravati, it goes to Amaravati, and this changes. Okay, so don't uh, get um, um, confused by this name. Our district is still Jalgo. So whenever you want to assess the data go back to this name and then you have it as Jalco. Okay, so here is where you could uh, download different data uh, for evapotranspiration. And most importantly, looking at it at India scale does help for seeing the spread of evapotranspiration. And uh, evapotranspiration is not going to be the same across India because of differences in rainfall, land use, land cover type, soil type, and also the plant type. Which is part of the land use and the data. Okay, so uh, we do have um, uh, again the default dates coming. So now here's the point like, so 30 is there and today is six. So within seven days, you get this data. And this data can be used to understand how much your land is consuming in a district. Okay, uh, so for example, you take a district where you have majority of the land as one type of crop. Now you can tell the farmers uh, saying that. Per day, you're losing this volume of water, which is, for example, it is one millimeter times hundred um, uh, meters square. Uh, so you get a volume, right? Uh, and um, hundred meters square is too small, but let's keep it for uh, the uh, calculation purpose. Um, and the one millimeter is a point uh, uh, zero zero one meter, right? So you're losing one uh, cubic, uh, 0.1 cubic meter per meter square area. So then what happens is the volume is now calculated and you tell the farmer, this is how much you're losing per meter cube, meter cube, meter square of water. Uh, and then now they will understand that, okay, do I have that much water to sustain my crop? Because now you know that the crop is going to grow for, uh, three more months and do you have water for the three more months for example this is the average value you get okay let's assume this is a a, a state and a district um, so there is a growing period uh, do you have this sustainable water resources to sustain this growing period uh, do you have the groundwater if not it's better to stop today rather than putting water and then losing the crop and the water Remember, 
the crop has to be fully grown uh, and then you harvest it for the market. You cannot harvest half the crop, half grown crop for the market, it is useless. And a lot of times this happens, uh, they cannot do anything, so they just let the cattle feed uh, on the crop because the crop is lost, there's no water. So these type of advisories through the remote sensing platforms help these farmers in assessing the dates for irrigation and also what type of irrigation and how much acre they can irrigate. Okay, so these things can be combined together in one platform, which can help these farmers tremendously uh, for setting up a, a good water budget for the groundwater. With this, I will conclude today's lecture. I will see you in the next lecture uh, on more data for groundwater management. Thank you.